Welcome to game three. This has been absolutely nuts. Back and forth, back and forth. We are Icelander versus Prism. This is going to be insane. These are both control decks. I would say strap yourself in, folks, because this will probably be the longest game that we have in our Clash Bash in a long time. Absolutely. I think it's, you know, there's a lot of back and forth. Obviously, Icelander uh, running a lot more poppers than Kano normally would. So uh, you still have to worry about the possible poppers that are sitting in that deck. But the amount of damage that Prism can present both on the board and also just through those wonderful heralds they get to push, you'll see that Prism is in fact using the old Luminaris. So a aura package still is quite possible. And on top of it, they get to use those figments too, which is Really, really great. It really sets up a pretty nice board for her. And this is a turn zero right here. She's coming in, turn zero, actually dealing damage, getting, getting a, you know, our angel set up, right? Like our figment mm -hmm. is out there and getting ready to pull an angel out. That was major. So both of these heroes start with low life. Iceland is at 18. Prism is at 16. And I think we'll see pretty quickly why Prism is at 16 here yeah. once we get our awards start popping off. So Aether Ice Vein, this is actually huge, right? Yeah, this is a lot. This is a lot. Prism could block this, right? She could uh, switch out on her angel and fully block it with an angel plus spectral shield. I'm not sure you really want to do that at the moment. So we'll see here because we do have only, we only have two AB and one spell void. So there's the spell void yeah, pop. already popped. Yeah. So that spell void's going through and it looks like, yeah, with only the, you know, the couple AB there, you're preventing as much of it as you can, but you definitely want, especially these Aether Ice Veins, these are big things to try and block out. So it's nice to get those spectral shields too. This waning moon is coming in. So blocking with one, is she going to pitch any more? Yep. Yeah, there right you there. go. A little bit of pitch there. And Get to go angel. ahead and flip that figment. So now they have their angel up, ready for their turn, ready to go ahead and utilize. It doesn't look like they have any soul from what I can see. So not really able to utilize uh, Aegis's ability, but I'm sure there's a way for them to try and get soul in this situation or at least come in with a really powerful herald attack. So let's see. Let's see whether or not Icelander's got any kind of responses. Only two cards in hand. Icelander hasn't used any of their stuff yet. We're not sure, obviously, if that is a ice card or just a regular old blue in their arsenal. But we're really trying to make sure to see whether or not uh, the defenses are up. Because luckily, Ward 4 on the Angel is incredibly unfortunate in some situations. Because if Icelander can just deal damage, that Angel doesn't matter. So they pitch to go attack with the Angel. Now they're coming in with an Aether Ice Vein. They have to be able to block out nearly all of this with the card in their hand through AB, which I don't believe they can. And uh, <laughs> it's going to end up popping the Angel, which is very good for Teppa. Absolutely. So coming in, are we targeting? Yeah, looks like we're targeting Hero, right? Yep. So yeah, you because you can't, you're, you're going to, I don't believe... Uh, yeah, you Iceland can't target targets. Uh, an angel, can you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't believe angel. I don't believe Aether Ice Vein targets. I believe there are some cards that do pretty well in targeting, mm -hmm. but they're usually like one arcane damage cards. Um, Dampen is another card that you can utilize for that, but it looks like what they did there is uh, they didn't have enough in their hand to prevent all the arcane, so the ward from the attack from the angel took up the last remaining there and popped the angel before damage came off. So that was uh, an unfortunate turn for henry there for sure and creating the one frostbite then gonna arsenal and pass to just trying to get a little bit more control over this mm -hmm. so it looks like they're gonna pay for that frostbite go ahead and come in with this worn tune herald now uh the herald's getting all their powerful buffs again something you do have to watch out for in icelander and they're probably due to draw into it at some point is in fact a popper uh, you do have silent stiletto which is kind of like your budget phantasmal footsteps but uh there oh there's oh my gosh there's the ice eternal so have fun <laughs> doing anything else on the rest of your turn i'm sure it's going to get fused yeah so this this is going to be big but that Angel's still going to be coming in for six. So, like, I know Tep is thinking about that. Like, okay, how can I get the most out of this to slow down their turn? 
without actually, you know, getting blown out of the water. Mm -hmm. And you definitely don't want to leave your arsenal empty at the end of your turn. But if this happens to be a popper in their hand, it's a pretty great way for them to shut down the rest of their opponent's turn and then just take no damage uh, in order to do that. Now, granted, if it's a it's a fighting spirit, you don't get any additional health because currently Icelander is at the higher life total. But looks like that's their plan is that they're going to take that damage. Uh, they're going to go ahead and take six there. <laughs> they're going to get that to soul. So now they get to go get a figment. Looks like they grabbed air addition. So now they're going to be a lot of card draw coming in. And there are those frostbites. So breaking the cross strap though, like this is big. So breaking the cross strap to then power that. So you pay through the frostbites. Then you bring in a herald of protection for six. You know, you know, Icelander doesn't want to block at this point. Yeah, with one card in hand, you I mean you want to keep that ice card, but my goodness, is this this is a lot of damage coming through if it ends up getting into if it hits, you get a spectral shield, which you get to use Luminaris for later. If you end up doing any other kind of, you know, if, it, if it, it's obviously not a popper in hand, it seems, because they're not blocking directly with that. They're trying to get mitigate as much damage as possible, but it looks like some damage is going to get off. So Prism is going to be getting a little bit of a value play here. Now, that was a fun little trick. I don't know if you caught that. So he pops Spellfire Cloak to then feed it into the Ironhide legs. Yeah, so he, that's, he that's a, good. He did the block with Spellfire to make sure that he could trigger it. It was just right. keeping him himself in, in line there. And there's that there's that good old Luminaris flavor right there with the Spectral Shield coming in for one. Not really much you can do about that scenario, but that brings that brings up a pretty low. Now down to one. Down to one. Not, uh, not pretty low. And crazy a pretty low. Solid, a solid, solid board on Prism's end. I mean, no. No ward with her two figments that she could flip whenever. The one ward with the spectral shield, two AB. I mean, Iceland just got to present a lot of damage here in order for, you know, any kind of possible win. It's obviously not over, right? You know, uh, wizards tend to like to come in and uh, be the the underdog and really clap back when they can. But I think uh, I think Prism's Prism's really got a powerful board. It's very very scary for Teppa, I'm sure. Yeah, you wonder, is there an out? Now, we're, like, we, we've we been talking about poppers, right? It's like, a popper is an out. Like, Teppa needs to start getting these poppers in line Absolutely. with it immediately. Now, Polar Blast, here's actually something crazy. Uh, Polar Blast will draw Teppa a card, right? So this is a great way for Teppa to try to get those cards, manipulate his hand to get extra cards to get to those poppers. Mm -hmm. so this point, pre hard. So... That that is actually key in here. Of hey, I got this out of my arsenal. I've now drawn a card. Did you draw a popper? Does Teppa have a popper in this? Because you're gonna need it. And I'm thinking the way Teppa's playing is they probably do. Like they just did um, the the waning moon, and you have to wonder behind that. Like, is there now? You had two floating, so maybe it's just like here's my last ditch effort to try right. to get a thing in there and get it. But you do have to wonder. Like, is there a popper in this? Um, based off of that, you do have four cards now. So that's absolutely nuts because you did replace your card in there. And there, there it is. is. There it is. There's that popper. So not only do you get the additional life from Findel's Fighting Spirit, but you also get to essentially end this Prism's turn unless they want to pay a blue for their stilettos to go ahead and get another action point. Now, that effectively could work with two floating, but they do have a Frostbite still available. So it is... You know, you'd have to pay it in order to do that silent stilettos, and that's quite a lot of resources for you to do nothing on your turn. Yep, and they just they did just flip the the angel, so they're gonna arsenal mm. and pass, so there wasn't really in there. But Prism's trying to get rid of those frostbites. He doesn't want to mm -hmm. see uh you know, Henry does not want to see anything coming in that's gonna manipulate the frostbites in there. Uh, maybe that was a little premature flip, but I, I get it. You're trying to just make sure, like, hey. I don't. I want to make sure I get this ready, so I don't have anything. Um, you know, you just kind of, you just hope you can block out what you can. Um, mm -hmm. And in this case, right, we got this Aether Ice Vein coming in. It's going to be for four, so that Angel will be able to soak it up, and then Prism can just go about her day and just swing a ton more at you. So I think that, that's the thought process there of like, hey, I'm just gonna, my Angel's gonna absorb it, gonna absorb that damage. I'm gonna have a 
five card hand ready to go. Yeah, I think having having the the ward four in this specific situation for this yellow ice vein is really, really helpful on Prism's end because they now effectively don't need to worry about discarding anything. You know, there's they don't pitch to AB. They don't need to do any of that. They can save it for a rainy day. And now they get to come in five cards, one card in soul. So they also get to utilize even a figment of erudition's, uh, fun, you know, little ability if they can get more of that going. Mm-hmm. Oh, the Her- Herald of Tenacity for Dominate. Yes, Ooh. we have a Herald of Tenacity for Dominate. And then we have an Aether Hail into a Waning Moon. So that's going to Aether Hail was that two damage, I believe. Uh, mm-hmm. But Waning Moon's going to come in first, dealing three. Then the Aether Hail comes in. And we have a Dominate for five. So this is critical. God, does he um, have a Sink Below in hand? That'd be crazy. That would be... So it's it's got to be a sink below or a popper, I guess, right? Like, yeah, got to be. You, you have to, although it's that. Oh, there it is. Oh God, you love to see. You love to see when people have the cards they need for the answer. That's really really good. Keeps you, it, you know, think, obviously like, Harold tenacity. Soul. Anything else, and he's dead. Yep. Like that's crazy. You just had the exact right card you need on a dominate. Like that is absolutely insane. It's now still two. A whopping two cards in hand. That card in Arsenal was that Worn Toon Herald, so that comes in for a ton of damage for nearly no resources. Oh, he did have a popper. A popper. Oh, he had, had a popper. He didn't lose. He didn't use it, and then he popped he it on the waited. second one. He waited. He waited so so far. He wanted to make sure that he utilized every single one of his resources. But oh, man, that is at that point. If you pop them then they can just stiletto like they had enough. Henry had enough to stiletto that and mm-hmm. get in the next one. Tepa hanging on for dear life at one for how many turns at this point? I don't know. Yeah, this has been quite a while. And now now here it is, right? This is the shutdown. This is the good old ice shutdown. They get to take a go ahead and freeze their arsenal and then they can freeze an ally. They currently do not have an ally. So uh, it is, you know, none of these angels are going to get frozen, but Having that arsenal now no longer being in use, now you have the ability, in case that was some kind of Oasis Respite or anything of the sort, Icelander very well could do five damage on this turn, especially if there's something powerful in there. And there's that cold snap. Remember that dig effect. We've Mm -hmm. only had two poppers. So now here Icelander is digging for more cards with this to go off. So this this gets a little bit weird, right? What we were talking about, this gets a little bit weird in the fact of Icelander is going to be able to keep getting through her cards. It's not what her hand is, what her hand when you have four cards that are drawing you cards. Mm-hmm. It's it's all about all about digging for those answers. And I think that's really the more important part here. Coming in with the waning moon and getting some some pitch value there. Now, Harold Triumph really, really oh, doesn't matter. Just <laughs> popped. My goodness. This is the beauty. If I recall correctly, I believe Herald of Triumph is the one where it says that uh, they all get minus one yes. uh, when defending. So the seven blocks specifically for that card, that is like some, that is some big IQ play. It's it's perfect. That was the card that they're looking for. Running those red poppers in Icelander, not only is it pure damage for Goliath Gauntlet, but it's also really, really good for just making sure that you have every answer you can for Prism. And Icelander... Just putting a card into Arsenal and passing, and you have to wonder, is there another popper in hand? Uh Uh-huh. It'd be probably their last one unless they're running something along the lines of, like, a... uh, I can't remember what the name of that other one is. Brutal Assault or one of those other other ones. But it's uh, you're definitely going to want to make sure that you have some kind of answer for the Phantasm. But at this point... Prism's at they're now at three life. They have mm-hmm. to really respect these waning moons. They have to respect all this arcane damage coming in. Because if they don't, you know, best case scenario, what they're able to do is flip a angel at any point. But you have to, you know, you have to make sure your resources are really well tuned. So there's oh. Getting pulled back. They look like they were trying to oh. So there is a there's a um, frostbite 
in play. And it looks like they're trying to do more than they actually can because the frostbite's preventing them. Mm hmm. Blocked with the frost hack. Well, that's interesting. Is that another sink below in hand? It is. Okay, there we go. Yeah, because so, you couldn't just block with the sink below there. Otherwise, you would have been you would have been gone. So there it Hen is. The good and Henry just betrayed his hand. He just showed I have an instant that I'm trying to pull off, and I don't have the resources. Mm -hmm. At that point, uh, Tepa goes, "All right, I don't think you're going to get another go again." Yep, this is it. This is getting pretty close to it. You know, they're going to be able to to come in with something, and at, again, three life. This is an easy blue emeritus scalding into a. Uh, you know, into a waning moon is game over. There's there's no way around this, especially only with AB2. The only way you'd be able to do this is to flip angels. And uh, I don't know. We'll yep, see. Here's the here's the ice bolt, though. So that's going to absolutely hit one if he doesn't throw it, you know, only enough AB. So I wonder at this point if you flip an angel to just kind of soak that. Yeah, it looks like that's what's happening. Looks like Prism's ability is going to activate. They are going to flip a angel they're going to flip erudition up so soraya is going to go ahead and block out a little bit of that ab to keep cards in hand unless of course they pitch for it which isn't a bad idea either that ward four is probably more so for the waning moon i guess but maybe not i guess it is going to be in fact for the ice bolt well both the ice bolt and the waning moon are coming in they're both coming in for three so it doesn't really matter the order that you do it you, you that's true, that that in, true and then you're going to pitch for the waning moon so there we go. Six, go again. Can block that. It. Obviously, that's only that is only we would say only six, but that is two cards out of Icelander's hand. Uh, so you wonder what's going to happen there because do you pitch and just go for the waning moon play or do you pass? Yeah, it's it's very interesting because you obviously with two cards in hand, that's that's definitely enough resources to wear you're going to want to make something happen. You have to make sure they have an answer, right? And if they get to strip cards from their hand, although it doesn't leave you with an ice card in your arsenal, uh, it looks like the card in hand was just a red aether hail. So it wasn't going to do much in regards to Icelander right, anyway. But, but Prism had a go again. So Prism had a chance to attack again. And so at that point, mm -hmm. Icelander saying, hey, I'm going to strip a card or you're going to die. Absolutely. And you're not going to get that go again. You got right here. Okay, so now this is big. This Icelander wow. actually has. Oh, of course oh he my does. God. <laughs> Look at that, and the parody too. So the one to two life, still less life than their opponent. They get to draw. They get to get that life gain, and it's enough to pop. I mean, having these poppers at just such an opportune moment is insane for Teppa. Really, this this if this was a Kano match, you wouldn't be seeing any of this at all. I think this would have been over quite some time ago, but making sure to really save these poppers for those key moments. It's really, really powerful on the side of Tepa there. Absolutely. That was exactly what Icelander needed in order to live. That was another dominate. Mm -hmm. You've got a three block. You've already, I think Tepa's already used, there's two sink belows and then mm -hmm. that's their last popper. So there's no more defensive measures right now in there other than throwing a bunch of cards in front of it. Um, but you're at 2-2. Two, two. This is what you want to see as Icelander. You go, hey, I'm at parity. If, if we're at parity, I'm ahead at this point. Yeah. And that 2 life, like, and Prism can only block 2 AB. Yeah, and she does have a soul so she can flip up. But like, that is a big deal. So just swinging your Weaning Moon in there, trying to deal 2, arsenaling it, and kind of moving on with your life. But this is huge. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt that what Icelander is also looking to get is, again, that blue emeritus scalding. I believe it's it, mm -hmm. it most I, most of the time that is the the dominate spell for Icelander, especially with AB2. You can't even block out all that damage there, but it's just a blue frosting. So, again, just more poke damage coming through, but it's you got to respect it at two life. That's just how it works. So you got the frostbite and you wonder is prism, you know, it's just one. You're just going to take it, but you only have two AB. So at this point, I would, if it was me, I would want to pitch for it. Yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. you get the blue in there. You block that when they swing it with the waning moon, because they most likely will. You can either, you know, you can block two of that to stay alive. But this is six coming at it. So 
Icelander at this point still has to respect it because, you know, Prism has two floating. You're going to block it, only going to bring it to one. So you got to throw two in there. There's that blue mirror school yeah. you keep talking about using it for block, which if I'm Henry, I love to see that right now. Mm -hmm, absolutely. That is that is the thing. Unless, of course, you know, there's a there's a world in which there's not enough resources in my opponent's hand to Aether Ice Vein, but there is the waning moon. So it's I I don't know. That's that is kind of an interesting concept to be able to go ahead and throw that in there and they get to pitch for it. They get to go ahead and make the angel. Man, quite an interesting play, I'd say. Yeah, I'm, so I'm wondering. Like that's that's kind of a weird sequencing, and I'm not sure 100 percent if that was correct from from Henry's side. But I don't like because I feel like I just block two, take one, and then put an arsenal. Although no, that's not true because at that point you do have to preserve it because Waning Moon is a threat every one of your turns. Yeah, but if it's coming in for three, no matter what, like if you can prevent it all now, you do it. So yeah. I'm, I have to talk myself out of that. I sit there going like, oh, go down to what? But we don't have 3 AB no matter what. You're yeah, dead any, anything ice over ice. anything over is 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 rough. I mean, uh, being even if you're just able to present a... Now that they have no angels, if they're able to present a red Aether Ice Vein on their turn, that's game. This is... I mean, it's over. They can't They mm -hmm. can't, They can't. can't block it. Even, even a yellow Aether Ice Vein. Now, that's is, when you look at that. They did not pitch a yellow, so there is no go again. So it's just one big oh, angel no. that they just blocked oh, out oh no i know we we think automatically like hey my angel gets go again no you're in, you have to have a yellow in the pitch which yeah. tells me henry doesn't have yellow uh right now so if he's pitching blue in there he is gonna block some of it but like that is critical and the fact of there's nothing to follow up so icelander doesn't have to worry about it yeah, this is that's a pretty free turn for Icelander to set up as much as possible and really delve into the the better turns for herself. You know, you, you still want to be able to present damage pretty frequently. There comes the blue winter spite, so mm -hmm. they are going to be able to go ahead and do the waning moon on their turn also and also make sure to get another card out of their opponent's hand. So more pitching. Looks like we're getting down to the wire, though, with only eight cards left in yep. Icelander's deck. <laughs> yep. Now, remember, Waning Moon on your turn is only dealing two damage. Mm -hmm. So it's better to just, if it's a blue, which I'm assuming it is, it's better to just arsenal it and go. Uh, this Absolutely. Is fascinating. So coming in, playing Pierce Reality, are you just going to give up your turn? Like, I don't understand. Yeah, that, that might not have been the best take there, but they also might not have, you know, this could be a turn in which they have more auras than they have actual mm -hmm. uh, heralds. And with no way to get anything oh, into yep. your soul, they just, you they just, get figments. They just show it, and it was two D-Reacts and another blue. Oh, gosh. Well, that's rough. So they're, they're going to get chipped away here. He fused Brain Freeze, which shows them your hand. So they just saw their hand and just was like, oh, let's go. That's exactly what's going on. I think it was two sink belows and another, uh, another, another blue aura. So there literally wasn't an angel. Hence the mm. let me just throw this out. That's you know weakness of of prism in there, right? If you don't have that mm -hmm. to throw out, this is it. You don't though. have auras. You don't have anything to go. This this aether ice vein, I think, is it. You can't you can't prevent enough of this damage. There That's it. it. Look at that, Icelander man. Ten to uh -huh. one. Our winner after comes winning both of the games. Oh my God. It comes out winning, <laughs> sweeping with Kano and the Levi. I think, I don't think, uh, I don't think Henry was expecting Kano be, to be the first one. And Teppa comes in with that surprise Kano. And then in that Ice Lantern match, like that is nuts. 10 to 1. Like, how do you come back from that? <laughs> they, that they, they hung insane. there in the most, I mean, they by a thread. They were waiting. They got all their answers at the right time. They utilized the resources properly, and they really were able to make sure that the light illusionist was taken down, and they completely secured their spot into the top four. It's absolutely wonderful. Thank you guys for joining us today. Alex, where can I find you? 
Well, uh, you can go ahead and find me over at Ashen Wings TCG over on YouTube. You know, we like to also post some Clash gameplay and commoner stuff over there, too. So if you guys like the more lower end formats, by all means, feel free to find me on there. You can also find me on Twitter at Ashen Wings. That's where I like to kind of just talk about the new stuff that happens in Flesh and Blood and just like to connect with the community. Absolutely. And I'm Nathaniel. You can find me here if you're watching it. This is where I live. I'm the guy behind the the camera editing. So if it's crappy, you know, just message me and tell me how terrible it is. Right, we'll try <laughs> to fix it. Uh, but we appreciate everyone joining us here, and we'll catch you on a top four. <laughs>